All right, so last time um, I showed you this fleece uh, and I will link that video up here. I sorted it out into sections and now I'm gonna start washing it and I'm gonna start with the belly wool. Um, for my course, I have to spin samples from each of the sections, um, belly, sides, bridge, shoulder, back, legs, um, separately. So I've got these two Ziploc bags that I pulled off um, from around the fleece where it would be closest to the belly, although the very bottom most belly of this particular sheep um, I think is relatively unwooled um, or would have been skirted immediately during shearing um, just from being dirty from being the belly. Anyways, this is the closest to belly that I have. So I've got my two bags of fleece. And to do it, I've got um, some mesh delicate laundry bags. Um, these just came from the dollar store inexpensively. And I've used them to wash fleece before. And Dawn uh, dish detergent, just regular old fashioned Dawn. Um, they have commercials where they put it on baby ducks from oil spills, so it has to be good enough for wool, right? And I'm just gonna go ahead and wash it in my sink. Um, I'll do one side first and then into the other. So I'll go ahead and set up into the bags and show you what I've done. So I just wanted to show you, uh, I've got one bag, it's just sitting in an empty sink waiting, but I've got one bag full and it's not particularly full. The key that I found is for there to be plenty of space in the bag so that water can get in amongst the locks. Um, and then my belly wool seems to have areas that look like this. Um, that have maybe felted on the sheep. I'm guessing that this is maybe like um, part of the belly that would be near to where the legs are moving and then you might get a little bit of felting in that sort of like under armpit area. And then sections that have these little locks. So not nice fat locks that um, the back and the bridge and the shoulders had, um, but locks nonetheless. And I'm not worrying about pulling these out and organizing them in my bag um, like in order if you are washing to really truly preserve lock structure you might want to do that. Um, I'm probably going to card this, uh, this fleece, uh, this section at least for sure, uh, on hand cards and so I'm not too worried about preserving lock structure. I just want to avoid felting and I want to get it clean. Um, you can feel the lanolin. It's a very uh, lanolin heavy fleece uh, just on my hands. And all I'm doing is just laying it inside the bag um, and I'll sort of show you on the outside probably with about that much space. So I might put one more handful up here and call that good for a bag. Um, so that, like I said, you want lots of space for the water to get in amongst the fleece and um, just filled up my sink with tap water as hot as it'll go and a good splash of the Dawn. Our tap water is pretty hot, like too hot to keep your fingers in. Um, and it's the heat that's gonna really lift the lanolin off. Uh, lanolin at room temperature is an oil or fat that is solid. So you need to get it into a liquid state and without agitation, the best way to do that is heat. And then the key is going to be not to let this cool down at any point. Because if you let it cool down, that lanolin will come back into a solid state and coat your fleece again. So the key is to get it moved from the first couple of washing soaks at a hot temperature into rinsing soaks again at a hot temperature to keep the lanolin liquid and off the fleece. So I'll just put the rest of this into a bag. Um, I'm just going to do this one one bag of belly fleece today because um, that will be more than enough that I need to sample the section um, and I have been pulling out um, some particularly poopy bits um, just because that's not going to clean up as fast as the rest of this so I may as well toss a little piece like this now. So I just uh, scooped off some of the foam so we don't really need that and lay this bag of fleece on the water um, but it is obviously um, fleece is water repellent, especially with all the lanolin on it, so it's going to want to float. And so I'm just going to carefully um, press it in. Sorry. 
Sounds like there's a little boy who wants my attention, so I'll just wrap this up real quick. Uh, immediately, just from that like little bit of pressing to this hot water, you can feel the oil from the lanolin already coming out of the fleece. Um, I would describe it as, you know, putting your hands into olive oil. Not that the whole thing feels like that, but you can feel the oil um, on you. And so that's it. It's submerged. Um, I'm just going to wash one bag at a time. And I'm going to go ahead and let this soak for about 20 minutes um, before switching it into a clean hot water bath over here. I'll drain this one out, replace it, and stick the next one in. Bambi came by to uh, poop on the lawn, but also, I guess, to help out with the fiber prep. We have a whole herd that live in that park, just on the other side of the fence. So I just lift, lifted uh, this bag of fleece out. You can see just how much dirty water it left behind. Um, turns out I forgot that I don't actually have a plug for this sink, so I'll just drain this one and pop it back into there. We'll just do one bag at a time. Um, you can see how big of a difference just one soak makes. So I just wanted to show you, um, I pulled that first bag out after doing two 20 to 30 minute soaks with soap in the water and then two rinses that were about maybe 15 minutes each um, with no soap uh, every time in as hot of tap water as I could get. And I just dumped one of these bags out into the bowl. This is still very, very wet, but you can see it's much, much wider than the original um, very yellowy brown color that it was. Um, and obviously this method of washing, I don't think any method of washing is going to get rid of veg matter um, in some sections of this fleece, um, especially because it's the belly section, are definitely full of veg matter. Um, combing will get rid of this. Carding will get rid of some, but not all. And really, I'm just gonna go ahead and finger pick it out as I spin it. And if I come across, you know, some locks that are particularly full, I might just discard it because I have tons of this. I have the other um, bag of locks in the sink. It's on its second wash, so you can see that the water is already not, the second time around, the water is much less brown. Uh, and much less oily from the lanolin. Um, the only thing that I'll say is that between each wash and rinse, I do make sure that I flip the bag over into the water um, just to make sure that both sides are getting washed equally, I guess. Um, yeah, so this one's gonna go do its thing and then I'll dump it into this bowl and then I'll show you what I do um, to help get this dry. All right, so I just uh, just drained the last um, rinse water, so the last uh, wash with no soap out of that second bag, and tossed them, or poured them more likely, out of the uh, bag and into this big bowl. And then I'm gonna take them down to my washing machine and throw them in on spin cycle, and I'll show you how to do that to get as much water out as I possibly can so they dry faster. Um, because it is still winter here in uh, Medicine Hat, and so although it's very, very dry, um, it's not like I'm going to be putting these outside to dry in, uh, in like beautiful summer air. Alright, so I just have a regular, um, nothing exciting, um, top load washing machine, and what I'm going to do is just take handfuls of my fleece here, and try and put it evenly around the barrel so that nothing is off balance. And easy as that, I'm just going to close the lid. I don't think it matters if I switch it to small or not, but I'll switch it to small. And then I'm just going to put it over here to halfway towards the end of my spin cycle. And that's it! So my spin cycle is done. Um, really only took five, ten minutes, not even. And it's pulled a considerable amount of water out of that fleece, and you can see just how much fluffier everything looks. Um, 
it still is wet to the touch, but wool is nothing if not super absorbent for water. But you can just see that I've got a nice bowl here of fairly clean, uh, still lots of, lots of veg matter as I mentioned before, but fairly clean and considerably drier fleece than I had before. Now I don't have like a um, garment drying rack, like a, like a mesh one that would dry things flat. So what I did is I just put two of my garment bags on my like butcher's block island here and then I push it as close to the heating vent in my kitchen as I can and this is probably where this fleece is going to dry the fastest. And I'll just put it on here in a layer. But at least most of that water did come out um, uh, on that spin cycle. I mean, I just don't have the space really to have a big um, screen drying system. And this works really great. Luckily I have the Alberta Prairies super dry air working in my favor. Um, this will probably sit here for 24 hours, which means the boys won't be in the kitchen tomorrow at all. Um, and then I'll check back with you and let you know how long it took to dry. Alright, so this has been sitting for about 18 hours now, and to be honest, it felt perfectly dry just sitting overnight first thing this morning, but I left it for most of the rest of today. Um, I'm washing the second batch of belly wool, so I'm going to pack this up so that when uh, I run the second batch through the dryer, I can pop it in the, uh, pop the new stuff on here to dry. Um, before I pack this up, I just show you a little bit more. Um, you can see everything is nice and white now. Uh, still a little bit maybe of dirt on the very tips of these locks, but that's okay. Don't think I really had any issues with felting. Um, you can pull these locks apart very, very easily. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna go ahead and sort out you can see I've got some sections like this right here that has a lot more veg matter in it. And I'm gonna sort that out separately um, so that mostly I can just process the, um, the cleaner fleece. And I'll save the stuff with veg matter, which is gonna need to be um, hand combed to get the uh, bits of grass out of it. Um, since carding isn't really gonna take any, any debris out of your fiber. Um, so this is definitely, I would say, clean enough to go ahead and card and spin the little tiny bits of veg that's still in here. Uh, as you spin your singles, you'll find most of that will, will fall out in drafting and spinning, if you're careful. Um, but stuff like this, where there's a lot more veg, I will separate off um, to be hand combed. So I've got... For my first Ziploc bag, I put about this much. That is clean enough and relatively free of veg matter to go ahead with. Um, this is the stuff that it's still very nice fleece, but um, definitely from the belly, you're gonna have more, more grass in it. And so this is gonna need to be um, hand combed to get all of this out, hopefully. Um, and here's some more of that. And then I did pick out by hand a little bit of the bigger pieces um, from the stuff that I'm calling clean. So I'll put this separate for eventually. And uh, in the next video, I will take you through um, prepping this fiber for spinning.